Hello and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. It's early in the morning. The lights are just starting to turn on in my fish room and I'm super sleepy. I thought to myself, hmm, what would be a helpful video topic for me to discuss that's something that I haven't really talked about yet on this channel. And I have a very special tank that I use as my for-profit tank. So I breed all the little critters in there so I can bring them to the Greater Chicago Cichlid Association swaps. Sometimes I even sell them at the Greater Chicago Cichlid Association meetings. And it helps me make a little bit of extra money that makes the hobby a bit more affordable because nowadays things are getting very pricey and sometimes it's hard to maintain your fish room so being able to make a little bit of extra money that can go towards your fish room is always really really helpful now this tank is very very easy so if that's something you would like to try for yourself maybe with a different combo of fish it is something i think you can probably replicate so it is a 20 gallon long with a lot of moss some driftwood, a sponge filter, and there I breed my red cherry shrimp, my albino bristlenose plecos, my red guppies, they're, well, red albino guppies, and yeah, moss, lots of moss. There's just a lot of moss. I think the moss is one of the keys to making this tank really, really easy to maintain. It's actually one of my lowest maintenance tanks to keep, and there's never any problems now that I think about it, which is kind of nice, really. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at this tank. And in the comments below, let me know, do you have any for-profit tanks that you have? Because maybe you might have a different setup that works really well. Or if you are planning to set up a for-profit tank, what would you like to breed and how do you imagine this tank to look like? So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the land of moss, guppy grass, and what I think is myrophilium, but I'm not 100% sure. So if someone can definitely figure out what that floating plant is, let me know in the comments down below. But the first critter that you will see in here are the RREA Superior Red Albino Guppies. It's a very long name. Don't know why this name is so long, but those are the guppies that I have. They're kind of nice to keep. They are partially the reason why I feel like I have anything in this tank because without these guppies this would just look like a tank of moss because you don't always see the shrimp right away and the plecos you don't see right away either so it would just look empty so they're more so there for me to enjoy than to breed I noticed that with this particular guppy strain they don't reproduce as quickly but that's kind of okay I have been considering swapping out for a different guppy strain, so that is something I might do in the future. So you'll see here my albino bristle nose plecos. I have two female adults in here and one male, and they spawn a lot. Oftentimes they'll be throwing both the short finned and the long finned varieties, as well as the normal non albino varieties as well. And because we have so many albino critters in here, I specifically made sure to not have a very strong light on this tank. So you'll see that a lot of the times at the bottom of the tank, you know, things get kind of dark and it's like that for a reason. Albino fish have very sensitive eyes and if you have them be exposed to really strong light, that's gonna be kind of hurting their little eyes. They can't really close their eyes because they don't have eyelids. So to make it easier for them, I have a light that I repurposed from a 10 gallon kit that I'm using to light this entire 20 gallon long. It's kind of weird, but it was a cheap light and it worked. And a lot of the plants in this setup are low light plants and they're very easy to maintain. So they don't need a lot of light to thrive and I never have to deal with algae issues. For some reason, everything just works really, really well. The downside is this tank is a bit difficult to film at times. So the reason that this tank works so well as a breeding tank for me is because it is so thickly planted. It is thick with three C's when it comes to all of the moss and this provides a lot of food for the shrimp to munch on because they will munch on a lot of the microorganisms that are on the plants but also all of the shrimp babies as well as the pleco and even guppy babies have so many places to hide even in this shot you could see all the little tiny baby shrimpies kind of swimming around they're all pretty happy 
the female guppies are super prego. The girls look like they're a square at this point or a rectangle. They're ready to give birth to all of the babies, but this tank is so easy and enjoyable to keep. It's, it's such a simple tank. Everything is breeding in here. I made sure that there are no fish that will eat other critters in here. So occasionally maybe the guppies can eat uh, some of their own babies or some of the baby shrimp, but because the colony of the shrimp is so strong and so big, they're not gonna be able to make a dent in it at all. So because no one's really for the most part eating anybody, this means that I have a ton of babies and a ton of babies means that I have fish to not only enjoy, but also to sell at my local fish club is also nice is that all the critters can eat similar foods so if i put in a pleca wafer everyone will munch on that if i put in some blood worms or some mice shrimp everybody will munch on that including the shrimp shrimp will eat other shrimp because they're secretly savages and here i put in some food and of course the plecos are making a fuss and stirring everything up which worked really well for the shrimpies because they were able to just pick up all the little bits and pieces so no food gets wasted everyone gets to eat a variety of different things and they seem to be doing really well and are thriving in this setup so this is really a great way to be able to not only breed fish but just really be able to enjoy them breeding tanks don't have to be boring although they do have to be practical so it has to be a setup that you're willing to take apart or move around or move things around because you want to be able to catch your shrimp or plecos or fish whenever you need to so a nice immaculate aquascape would be very difficult while using moss and plants that are not rooted or attached anywhere makes it really really easy to always be moving things around and the flexibility of it all makes this a very interesting tank to keep because it never looks the same. Over the years I've been filming this tank and it always looks different all the time and I really really enjoy it as well as the moss really creates a really big sense of depth so this tank looks a lot bigger than it really is and also you can see these girls are having a squabble right here at the bottom. The meanest fish in this entire tank are my female guppies. These girls are so mean. They will sometimes bully each other, but luckily there's a lot of hiding places so they can definitely get away from each other if needed. So thank you for watching. I hope that you found this video helpful and informative. I'm gonna go back to work doing all the work things and I hope that this video made your day a little better. Thanks for taking the time to hang out with me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.